Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 23rd of March, and it's National Day of Reflection. And a big happy birthday to Mo Farah, Amanda Plummer, Marty Palo, and Damon Albarn. Tuesday saw Russian forces enter the besieged city of Mariupol, where approximately 100,000 Ukrainians remain trapped in what human rights watchers called a freezing hellscape. Overnight, Russian troops appeared to have seized a humanitarian convoy capturing first aid workers and drivers. Ukrainian Member of Parliament Dmitry Gurin says his fellow citizens have seen their whole city and lives being destroyed. They live in, uh, without heating, electricity, water, uh, and uh it's medieval conditions and uh, shelling never stops and shooting in Mariupol never stops. President Zelensky again appealed for direct talks with Vladimir Putin amid reports that Russian forces have essentially kidnapped over 2,000 children from the Donetsk and Lugansk region and taken them to Russia. The Ukrainian president also took time to address the Italian parliament, warning that for Russian troops, Ukraine's just the gateway to Europe and that his nation needs support. Now we are at the border of uh, Surviving. With reports that Russian troops have limited supplies left and suggestions that the Ukrainian army has begun to push back in key areas, the pressure on Vladimir Putin continues to mount. His spokesperson Dmitry Peskov spoke to Christine Amapor on CNN and refused a number of times to rule out the threat of nuclear weapons. President Putin intends to make the world listen to and understand our concerns. We've been trying to convey our concerns to the world for a couple of decades. Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny was sentenced to a further nine years in prison on Tuesday, accused of large-scale fraud and contempt of court. He's already serving a two-year sentence in a prison camp. He's been tweeting from prison, promising that his foundation will continue to expose Putin's corruption, and his spokesperson Kira Yamish says he was expecting a long sentence. Uh, not a surprise that uh, Putin would like to keep Alexei in prison for as long as he is in power. This 13 years of strict regime, which prosecutor's office um, asked for Alexei, uh, is um, insanely huge term. As pressure mounts on Putin, the US has been warning that a wave of Russian cyber attacks on US companies is possible. President Joe Biden, who's on a plane to Europe for a G7 meeting, says it's a serious risk. Today, my administration is issuing new warnings that, based on evolving intelligence, Russia may be planning a cyber attack against us. As I said, the magnitude of Russia's cyber capacity is fairly consequential, and it's coming. The Met Police were back in the spotlight on Tuesday with a new report from the Inspector of Constabulary concluding that their approach to handling corruption within their ranks is not fit for purpose. In particular, they failed to learn any lessons from the notorious unsolved murder of private investigator Daniel Morgan back in 1987, and Inspector Matt Parr says they've behaved in ways that appear arrogant, secretive and lethargic. The force is not getting its basic counter-corruption techniques right. Uh, it's opening itself up for a degree of trouble that it, it, it really can't stand. They're currently awaiting the appointment of a new commissioner after the departure of Dame Cressida Dick, but Sir Steve House, the deputy commissioner, says they'll take the learnings to heart this time. We're not being defensive about this. I know the Met is often accused of being overly defensive and not listening to the public, not listening to le- lessons and not learning effectively and quick enough. We are determined to learn from this. Wednesday sees Chancellor Rishi Sunak introduce his spring statement, kind of like a mini-budget. He's under pressure to deal with rising inflation, an energy crisis and a possible dip in economic growth brought on by the war in Ukraine. The spotlight's firmly on fuel duty and consumer champion Martin Lewis testified before MPs on Tuesday saying it's absolutely crucial that the government act to drive down energy costs. So for those people on lower to middle incomes, a 350 quid worth of help, of which £200 is questionable, to cover a £1,300 rise. Well, you don't need to be the money-saving expert to work out, no, that is not enough. The rocket science is not how we fix it. You fix it by making people's bills cheaper. It's, it's having the political will to get that done, and others will have to work out how it's paid for. Still to come on the Spark 7, shot news for the world of tennis, and Lizzo is back, 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 right after this. <laughs> Welcome back. In tennis, world number one, Australia's Ash Barty has stunned the sporting world by announcing she's retiring age 25. 
She's just won the Australian Open, the first home player to do so in 44 years, and she's won Grand Slams on clay, grass and hard court. She had taken a long break before in 2014, but this time it seems it's for good. I'll be retiring from tennis. It's the first time I've actually said it out loud and um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say, but I'm so happy and I'm so ready and I just know at the moment in my heart for me as a person, this is right. Lizzo's back with a new single called About Damn Time. It's the first track from a new album which took three years to complete. I guess a bank manager came up with that title. She popped up on James Corden's show to give him a vinyl copy of the single, but also got into a sing-off, and she really nailed Harry Styles' Watermelon Sugar. I don't know if I could ever go without Watermelon Sugar High Watermelon Sugar High Watermelon Sugar High Jimmy Savile was one of the UK's favourite charity fundraisers and TV personalities, but shortly after his death in 2011, it became very clear that he was actually a sexual predator hiding in plain sight. An investigation led to more than 450 allegations of abuse, with some victims as young as five. There's currently a BBC drama in production called The Reckoning, which sees Steve Coogan transform into the DJ and presenter, but Netflix have got to the story first. Their documentary is called Jimmy Savile, A British Horror Story, and it examines through extensive archive footage the evil within Jimmy and delves into how he managed to fool an entire nation for four decades. It drops on April the 6th. I am a voluntary helper. Sometimes, when nobody's looking, I help the lasses. It turns out everywhere he'd been, there'd been abuse. There's another seat that can catch me out, ladies and gentlemen. The nation created Jimmy Savile. I'm not in your world. I'm not constrained by anything. This has been The Smart 7. Wherever you're listening, do us a favour and hit the follow button. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Have a great day. Written, produced and published by Daft Dogs.